Uh, right about now, now the presence of use the volume a little bit. Right. The presence of uh, the minister. Sorry. Um, yeah. Check with the stock. Bucket. One, two. Colin, are you up to? I shall be content to yeah. Yeah. So, Minister, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon. We are sorry for starting at this time. We were, as a ministry of family, engaged in a number of exciting events this morning some of which we will bring you up to speed on. We'd like to begin this on a, an unusually somber note. It was on this day, a couple of years ago which many will consider a faded memory. But we mean this call to his memory and he is born to the exemplary service Request freedom of expression and the rights of individuals to know. Today we want to remember veteran journalists, investigative reporter, the late Charles Mayo. It was on this day that uh, he lost his life in the line of duty. We extend again our deepest condolences to the family. We believe that all of us have learned from that experience. We want to encourage you. All of you journalists who were inspired not just by Charles but by many others before you sought the truth, sought to report the truth, sought to uphold the high standards of journalism. This government was pleased to name this hall its own, and will continue to be a place for the exchange of views and for, through you, continuous exercise, the right, freedom of expression, of thought, and of speech. Today we are visiting with us to remind us of his legacy. His cameraman, <clears throat> guy who walked with him many years, who 
we will not, we didn't see any of the clips, but we were responsible for all of the clips. James, called him Jimmy Mango, is our special guest today. Um, we thought to just invite him to be here with us. <clears throat> Again, we are saddened personally and as a nation by the loss of a friend, a brother, a family man, a colleague, a professional. A scholar, someone who rose from ordinary ranks, grew up under ordinary circumstances, someone who believed in his ideas and believed in his dreams, that we are not limited where we are born or unto whom we are born. That we can soar to heights unknown. That we can achieve and even conquer our dreams. From on the old road to Road of College, ending up at Yale University. This nation, many friends of his, deeply sad. I was shocked personally to hear the moon going. My friend and brother. Deputy Governor of the Central Bank for Economic Affairs. So, who and I flew in together after he had attended <coughs> meetings representing our government in Washington, D.C., along with other senior officials of the bank. We were during town hall meetings, having attended a meeting with the President, the General Assembly, Honorable Theophilus Tutti Betty. He is all for the country. He lost his life. Wow. Still serving, giving dedicated service to this country, representing us. A meeting in Nigeria. We wish for his family strength to continue. We wish for his daughter, his wife. All those associated with brothers, sisters, friends, you know how deeply they must be grieving. This nation, this president, this government sends deepest condolences and grieves with them. We pray God's continuous strength on the family. We know the loss that has been sustained, and we also commensurate with the central bank family. Each man's death in Jordan. I am in every man's death. Because each man is a part of me. And the, soul, and the souls of all those. Faithfully departed. Rest in peace. 
We must move on. But it is a duty we have. So today we will in our own fashion talk to you about some of the issues that have been making your headlines and <clears throat> invite your questions. Um, we want to begin after that uh, bit of sad note to a number of things that happened today which, uh, for which we were compelled to begin at this hour. Early this morning at about 9.30, the Vice President, you know the Vice President has been very busy over the last few days. He just returned from Nigeria representing the government, representing the president who was invited at the legislative forum. Immediately upon his return early this morning, at the 8 p.m. terminal of the free port of Monrovia, on behalf of the president and the government and grateful people of Liberia, the vice president received four containers of assorted medical supplies and equipment donated to this government by the Embassy of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, the Republic of Liberia. We were told that one of the containers contained one million doses of drugs to treat and prevent worms. The Minister of Health informed us at the presentation that in fact Those drugs will be presented to the Minister of Education to be used across our schools across the country to help dewarm our children. That is going to be the priority and the use to which one million dewarming drugs been provided. We want to join the Vice President in thanking all of those who worked very hard to make this contribution to our country true. We know how useful it is. Like the Vice President indicated at the ceremony, you can build buildings, they will not be converted necessarily into clinics and hospitals unless and until you have medical equipment and drugs and doctors and nurses. This would not have come at a better time. And all across the country, our people are in need medical assistance. We want to thank Dr. Walter Guenegali, who on his visit to Italy impressed upon the sovereign order of Malta to assist this government supplies. I know sometimes you hear government officials are traveling all around and you you're very concerned. We are all over the place. Many times as we go all over the place we go with our hearts in hand. 
Thank you for assistance because we know we are we need assistance and support. So on one of those trips, Dr. Buenegali, he particularly mentioned and expressed deep satisfaction for the efforts and assistance of our ambassadors to Italy and to the Court of St. James, former ambassador to the Court of St. James, former vice chair of the transitional government, Wesley Momo Johnson and El Mohammed Sharif in Italy for the instrumental role they play, not just in making the request on behalf of our government, but following through until today the full containers richly packed landed on our soil. As we speak, they are now being processed, taken out of the Freeport of Monrovia for distribution to schools and to clinics and hospitals all across the country. The more drugs we get, the more medical equipment we get, the better our health facilities. The presentation on behalf of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta was made by Dr. Ricardo Sembietti. He introduced the occasion, he's the Chargé d'Affaires here. And Pierre Luigi Nadis, the ambassador of Malta to Italy, has cutted medical equipment and supplies and presented a scene to the vice president. We joined the vice president in thanking the sovereign military order of Malta for their kind and generous assistance to the country. And we extend similar gratitude to all those who look upon our country with favor, respecting how far we have traveled and assisting us to continue our journey toward nation building. Immediately after we parted company with the Freeport, proceeded to the Capitol building, where the Vice President again was honored to receive firefighting equipment uniforms, in fact, the program is ongoing, firefighting equipment and other materials donated to the government of Liberia through the Ministry of Justice's uh, fire department, but the Fire Rescue Alliance of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, USA. We were happy to learn that led by the Vice President, Minister of Justice, the Director of the Fire Service, a number of Liberians currently resident in the United States employed in the Fire Rescue Alliance of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, USA, actually represented to their boss, Fire Chief Ken Pillerman, about that, about the need to assist Liberians here with firefighting equipment. Fire Chief Ken Billerman and his team visited Liberia, saw the need, actually participated in a number of firefighting exercises in actually fighting real fire with bucket and with water. I worked with the Vice President's office 
In fact, the vice president adopted him and gave him the kissing name, Sir. He went back and has returned not just with firefighting equipment, not just with a fire truck, the fire people they call it a fire engine, fire truck that we saw on display carries 800 gallons of water at a time, modern equipment, but also Fire Chief Ken Fellerman and the Fire Rescue Alliance of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota brought along a skate unit. What that is, is when the big fire truck or engine can't go through the maze of the congestion of some of our <coughs> areas and places, you have a smaller unit mounted on a pickup truck that can be maneuvered in there that carries 200 gallons of water at a time. But they also brought an ambulance stuck and ready to go with medical supplies and equipment on board that is capable not just rescuing people from fire, but providing immediate medical assistance and attention. The Vice President thanked the firefighting team. They've been in town for 10 days now, providing training, assembling all of the equipment, helping our people, teaching them how to use it. We were moved and deeply touched by Chief Ken Pillerman to all of us I in that fire service that we almost always refer to as checker players. He's formed some of the most ambitious, some of the most dedicated, some of the most committed firefighters he's seen anywhere in the world. With very little or no resources, they continue to stand up to give their all a sacrificial service to their country. We join the Vice President, Minister of Justice, Fire Chief Ken Pillerman, in thanking our fire servicemen. It was it was exciting, it was wonderful to see them dressed in firefighting gear. We are told that some of the things they were wearing are built to withstand burns. That the boots we saw can take them even through electric shops. We're not asking them to try it. We're asking them to please do their best to avoid it. But what we found out that excited us was to see how vibrant, how serious they appear, how dedicated they were. They put on a bit of demonstration for us with the fire engine, with the skate. And suddenly, we're not saying put fire around the city to test them. But we can sleep much better knowing that they are not 100% ready because they still need more support. But they are good enough ready to get the job done when and if. We want to join the Vice President, the Minister of Justice, the Director of the Library of Fire Service. On behalf of this government, to also thank Fire Rescue Alliance, those librarians that are in the employ of the ranks who encourage them to come to Liberia. 
We understand some will leave on tomorrow. But our team will remain here to continue with the training of our people, our nation is grateful for their assistance to all of us. You don't know how important some of these things can be until you yourself get attacked by fire. Let us continue to show respect for our firefighting men. Thank them for their dedicated service to our country. So because we had to attend these two very important programs, we are starting this one. Important as it also is a little late. We hope that you will excuse us. Now, over the weekend, many of you reported about the drug bust that occurred at the TNE checkpoint along the Liberia Sierra Leonean border involving police superintendent Barry Dolo and a number of co-conspirators including one from Guinea and another from Sierra Leone. And we have also reported commendation from the president for the vigilance shown, for the continued dedication of law enforcement officers. You know, sometimes when we receive good news, we try to fit out the body in it because our apparently our psyche is toward the reception of bad news. I've heard argument that when a dog bites a man, that's not news, but when a man bites the dog, then that is the news. Apparently what it feeds ever so increasingly is that good news is no news, bad news is news. And so sometimes when people want to make news, they tend to just do bad. And then they easily grab your headlines. But the president is very excited about this drug bus for several reasons. I want to remind you of an incident in Badnersville where the elements of the Liberal National Police arrested a young man who was brandishing so much money. Again, I remember the figure was around $12,000 in a local kiosk, drinking spa. We were treating all a Jude, buying and spending, if I were wasting it. He got arrested, he was taken to the, poli to the police depot, and it was found out that he couldn't have been the owner of that money. But clearly, no owner of that money would use it the way he was using it. It may have been in his possession, but he still did not mean he owned it. And so the police went on a search in the area, made an announcement, and this gentleman came forward that in fact the night before he was a victim of armed robbery. He reported 
a shot of what this young man has expended in his own confession. Police returned to him all of his money. We, we didn't celebrate that story because we say to ourselves that is what the police are supposed to do. So that is no news. I'm not even sure it made your headlines. In fact, I, I remember we were reviewing the story and some people were doing that all. Imagine had the struggling police officers at that depot eating that money. It would not have been all at that point. You will be calling for their heads. These people ate the man money. But that is a story that should lift all of us up, that should give us hope. <laughs> Especially when we wait for these reports that say police men can take bribe five five dollar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm police call rob. It may be true, but there are those who are there making honest effort to be better, to make the institution better. They need our support. They need our recognition. If we will remain a society that will only celebrate back, then we point our people toward being back. If people can make our headlines for doing good, then we point more and more people in the direction of doing good. It is as simple as that. Here we have another exciting story. Let's put it in context. Day in, day out, everybody crying. My man, not easy. One of my brother men told me, he said, you're red, you're red, you're yellow. <laughs> One o'clock in the morning, in response to a challenge from the president to step up vigilance around our border, in our societies, in our communities, against, especially against human trafficking. As a result of that dedicated vigilance by ordinary men and women like you, who themselves are catching hard time. You bring a police director here, they will complain of a lack of logistics. Everybody catching hard time. You are able to capture somebody, in fact, not just somebody, one of your own senior officers carrying four million dollars worth of drugs. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about ten thousand dollars. I'm not talking about five hundred dollars. For the equivalent of four, the DEA has informed us that the total street value of what was seized is three hundred and thirty million seven hundred and fifty thousand. Liberian dollars. Divide that by 80. If your calculator good, I ask you to use your own head. You may see that it amounts to 4,134,375 US dollars. Parcels, according to the DEA, in a way that they're ready to get, you know, we read parcel. It's already parcel. Ten double bed. They don't use the call double bed. Well, I'm gonna say double bed. Ten. 
you can't be there. Maybe you know I have children with, with the, the, the next day. Maybe you don't know how you pay your rent with money. Maybe you even owe rent. Maybe your uniform not even brand new. Maybe you even get a uniform. But you, you arrested that. And the very next morning, the director is there reporting and turning over everything to the DA. Arresting your own senior officer. If I met John from the car, he ran away, they ran behind. Brought him back. Brought him to town. Concluded the investigation. Back to Kosame. People come there. I'm encouraging you to go there. In fact, the DA informed me that they want to publicly, they've contacted the Environmental Protection Agency and other stakeholders. I'm inviting the press to follow up on this. They want to dispose publicly. At least, not publicly, so everybody can get half. But they want to dispose of it in a way that you will see them disposing of it. Because the states of Thomas is in this town. Oh, let me hear, man. If I don't have a million, this close four million, you know how much million they get? How much million they have worked out again? No, it's actually four million. <laughs> they will dispose of it, I understand, on tomorrow. Working with the Environmental Protection Agency, I want to invite you. We we'll get the specific location for the EPA and the DEA so you can be there. We don't want it to stay in anybody's possession too long. Even you, the press, if you want to hold it, we say no. <laughs> we want to dispose of it. We want you to report that we dispose. And when you dispose of it, everybody will wear mine. Stay for safe distance. We don't want by the time you finish disposing of it, we start to dispose of you. <laughs> no, nobody gets it too close. That will bring the EP. <laughs> but I think there's another dimension to this story. So they arrested their own. Hey, my people, we stay in the same lab, bro. Police arrest their own senior officer. And reported it. And they arrested a man one o'clock in the morning. With all of us sleeping. Or at least most of us. That means very few of us would have known. And maybe some people are going to speculate. Oh, I heard they say something was not changing. Jeff went it last now. But when you see it, I hear everybody. So, an excited police comes back and they inform you. They didn't attempt to hide the identity of Mr. Perry Tolu. They didn't say, oh, when we arrested him, the man ran away. And there's a man hung for him. We can't find him. They didn't say we arrested five and, and they escaped with a ballon five. I know we stay in our belief. Anything that good about ourselves. Sometimes hard. But they released everything. They finally turned over the drug to the team. It was a joint security operation. But there's something else. The commissioner of Tiwa District, Honorable Clarissa, passed away. The story we are getting is that she led the community effort along with the joint security to ensure this arrest. The president has already indicated that she intends, on behalf of a grateful president, a grateful nation, to reward Honorable Passaway 
for exemplary service and dedication, honesty and bravery, to also reward those ordinary men who could have been provoked to do the wrong thing. And this story would have never been told. We must learn in this country to reward good consequences. Even as we continue to punish bad behavior. Talking about punishing bad behavior, as we speak, we've been informed that Police Superintendent Dolo and his co-conspirators are being arraigned in Grand Cape Mount County before a judge. And they are being charged properly in keeping with our laws. Drug trafficking and illegal possession of dangerous drugs. What will happen on the next, what do you call that Friday? Super Friday. Super Friday. That drug has led them in our town. What will happen to our children? We must be grateful for the service of those and the dedication and the honesty to the law enforcement officers. I know sometimes in the town, some people think they say, what? Four million? No man, no man, no man, no man, better man. You got a routine there, you, you knock up. The man didn't knock up. I want to thank them for putting our children's future first, for putting our country first, for their service. And of course, the story became who head of the combo, who do the tea of the combo, who do the center of the combo. But here is a better story. And like I said, our country, our society, it's becoming a place where you can be head of Congo, tail of Congo. You can be in the center of the Congo. You break the law, there will be no hiding place for you. That Congo will not hide you. We will arrest you, we'll properly investigate you, and as it's been done, we will prosecute you in keeping with our laws. You can be minister, director. We want to encourage all our law enforcement officers. We know we beat on you. We know sometimes you don't respect the service you gave. We know there may be one or two bad ones amongst you, and we use those one or two bad ones to throw blankets as pressure on all of you. But we know there are many of you without whose service to our country. Many of us will not sleep at night and many of us may not be here. We continue to thank you. This nation is grateful to those individuals. And we'll continue to ask them to stand up. And we'll continue to ask you, members of the and fellow Liberians, every family can have one or two bad ones. No government in this world is capable of stopping the commission of every crime. What is important is what a government does when a crime is committed. Do you cover it up? Do you hide the perpetrators because of their status in society? Or because they run in Congo or the head of Congo or tail of Congo? Or do you march each one? before the law and let them answer each and every one of us for crimes committed 
violating the public trust, or abusing our offices. I know this is not an exciting story. But it's a wonderful story for our country. It's a wonderful story for our society. It testifies to the changing nature of our country, of our society, and our commitment to the rule of law and the administration of justice to bring all of us as equals before the law. So can we get rid of the definition of convoy and motoki and escort now understand there will be no hiding place for criminals. This crackdown will continue. It's a nationwide crackdown. We have been informed. Those of you operating ghettos and darkening the future of our country and blighting the hopes of many of our young people. This crackdown is coming after you. Let me be clear. This country will continue to open its arms and its doors to all of its friends, all of its neighbors. If you break our laws, we'll throw the book at you as well. We want business. We don't want transnational crime. I don't care who you are. You're welcome. As always, to our country. If you think you will come here and you will start selling drugs to our young people, the only business you know that drug business is that using our, our poor border to bring your drugs here to damage the future of our country. Literally damage our young people. Weaken their minds. You'll find us a tough customer to deal with. If you're running a ghetto, don't say the Minister of Information didn't say it. This crackdown is coming after you. This is a nationwide crackdown on drug trafficking, drug dealing, human trafficking. A few weeks ago, we, we reminded all of us here, human trafficking is unacceptable in this country. Unacceptable. And that is why that vigilance was mounted and will remain in force. In fact, on the 11th, Mr. Sonny Ojil, O-R-G-I-L, a Nigerian national was arrested in Douala, said to be in possession of 45.9 grams of heroin. We will find you. This place will be hot for you. No. Let's do what we can to keep our country safe. The duty of this government is to protect the future of his citizens. Drug use is not a way we protect our future. Please, we take this very seriously. We take this very, very seriously. We, join, we want to call on all Liberians to help us in this fight. For it is a fight that goes to the heart of de defining who we will be tomorrow. We can be trying to improve our schools and let our children waste away in ghettos, injecting themselves, running to boys and girls, you see crazy eyes, people talking things they don't even understand, they don't even know that they're under the influence of drugs brought into our country from all over the place. We will stop it. 
we will stop it. We're asking all Liberians to join us. If you have information, please contact the police. If you know of officials involved in this, a covering up, please contact the DEA and the police. Contact the joint security. By doing this, you will help your country. By doing this, you have to secure your future. And to see your child on drugs. Please join the effort. Let's stop this. Our place will not be the dumping ground for drugs. Norway, our good territory, be the place for transshipment of drugs and human trafficking. I don't care who you are, where you are. You participate in this, the law will participate on you. So we are going to be talking convoy, Muruki, Escort car. You are going to be talking no tests, no tests. Please get ready. Don't be surprised. Don't say we didn't tell you. The nationwide crackdown will continue. We are satisfied with the results we are getting, and we are encouraging our law enforcement officers men and women of commitment and dedication to this country to continue. We may not celebrate you today, but this nation will be grateful to you for the future you will help to secure tomorrow. <clears throat> we were participants in celebrated the just ended open government partnership summit held in london i guess it was the sixth summit you know that liberia has acceded to the open government partnership we believe that an open government is a better government it's a more stable democratic government we were represented by one person here, Deputy Minister Norris Square. Liberia will continue to be engaged in our open government partnership. It calls for the use of technology, it calls for increased openness, it calls for a dedicated partnership between civil society and the government. So that more and more people are enabled to participate in the national decision making processes of the country. So that more and more can be heard, can know what their government is doing. We think the more people know, the safer and better our society can be. Now, every month or month and a half, you get a headline about Miss or Mrs. Ellen Cochran. We like to say a few things. One, every Liberian everywhere listening to me, we are not, we want to continue this sense of freedom in the country and we we'll continue to consolidate it. We we'll continue to create a sense of free Liberians will continue to enjoy and breathe fresher air of freedom. Whether it be of expression, of worship, participation, thought. But that should never be considered weakness. In fact, that is the strength of this government. That people continue to breathe freely to think free, to express themselves. But being a responsible government also is to know when somebody is setting simple elementary, if I always go monkey trap. 
when you don't hear us in the media on the Ellen Cochran business since the indictment, do not suppose that we are not taking it seriously. Please do not. Responsible governments don't behave like that. We represent you. We cannot be lured. We cannot be enticed into a public trial of an issue that should be tried in the courts. Every day you wake up, oh, one tape or release, oh. And the woman says she got more. Louis Brown, the woman got tape on you. Any tape you get on Louis Brown, play it. Our only tape will play that will try to bring you here to answer these charges in our courts. Now, what we're going to take. Just keep repeating my own words every day on that. What have we done? We have served all concern. There are processes and procedures for serving people who suddenly decide that they get other nationality. We use the agencies of their nationalities to do our service. Where these corporate entities exist and they are service agents, we hire them. Justice Ministry has hired them. And they have received those services. Diaspora consultant, we can, we can inform you that they have been served. As well as they call it Johnson and Johnson, Johnson, Associate. Johnson and Associate. They have been served. The individuals concerned because of their claim to foreign nationality. They're not in our country. When they were here, we were impressed that they were Liberian. Anyway, what has been done? The service, they're not our country. We can be walking the street with our bailiff and looking for them. They say, uh, our bailiff said, we know the people street me. So we present our indictment to the government through the representative of the government in near our capital. That is what we have done. We are pleased with the process as it is ongoing. But every day, you know, people entice our press. Oh, I haven't been served, oh, but according to count one of that indictment, then you list 400 different. There is something in law called constructive notice. How, why are you reacting to the thing you haven't been served? <coughs> Then you say we must have the trial in our newspapers. <laughs> you really take it on to be joking. The last thing I tell you, government, I to be joking. <clears throat> Everything we need to do, quote me, to bring Ms. or Mrs. Cochran here, along with Mr. Johnson here. To answer to our indictment, this government has and will continue to do. Yes, what we will not do, and quote me again, we will not be enticed into trying the matter that we try in our court. We start trying it in the newspaper. Then somebody take the newspaper later on and say, oh. But I will never get justice in our country because you know, okay, the government said every day they try me in their paper. They answer me in their paper. 
Then you use it as an excuse now. How can I get justice there when every day they do it there? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen of the press, anybody who want to play deep, I got Louis Brown voice on him. And he confessing to the crime he committed in the ministry. Play it. You want to put it on YouTube? My tube? Our tube? Any tube? Put it there. You want to answer our indictment? There's a place there. Answer our indictment in our book. If you say our indictment are strong and you get documents, the press people, they're not a jury. Or you try to convert them into being a jury. The press people, they're not a court. If our evidence is weak, our court has shown that they are strong enough to throw our government cases. Not once, not twice. So you're saying or ask some of these people. But man, if all the things the people say against you, you get everything that I lie. But okay, all you're giving to now, they just can't tell it. They lie on you. You don't know how to get it, but I'll answer one by one by one by one by everything. And I'll give you 360 something pages. What kind of business kids? Anyway, we will not stop. We will not stop. And that game has to end at some point. I get deep. Okay, I, I, I record it. And I will play, play. Play it. In fact, play more. Only thing we're trying to do that will bring here an answer to our code. You are not going to play all of it there until we draw away. Play it. If you're telling me we play, play. We're scared of your team. Play anything. Get can here and answer our charges. And I want money to library for money. So, remember the press. You're already trying to make into code now and judges. <laughs> and the new hell and all that. The police say, hey, if the government have, have, have to give more answer, there are more answer than there are more questions than answer. If you want to be loyal for every woman, yet they all the can. Then we give all the answer in the hood to all the questions that you yourself are raising now. But please don't permit yourself to be used like this. You're not fair. That money that is being accused, that is being alleged, you 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 you, you want some too. So I encourage our friend, our sister, our brother, that the only place to exonerate yourself is in the court. The government will not be involved in trying the matter in newspaper. A tie center. You go to the tie center now. Start you want to play? Uh, uh, we receive uh, 360 pages of response to the indictment, but the indictment has not been received. What do you say? I say nothing. I say come to our court and answer. Our great jury brought an indictment. We have faith in our team of lawyers. And this government will do everything in keeping with our laws, in keeping with best practice, in keeping with all of the agreements which binds our two sisterly nations. <clears throat> and will not be suckered every day, yet day, yet day. Okay. <clears throat> Bit of. Uh, On the weekend, President Sully will be attending the Afro 
Asia Summit in Wit We invite your friends, President, as she travels on our behalf, continue to seek support. President is going, not to go lie in a hotel. <laughs> President is going to seek assistance for our ongoing road projects, for our infrastructure projects, for our power program. We are very hopeful, like always, that she will use every opportunity provided to not just represent Liberia well, but to seek international support and assistance for our country. We are determined to connect every county capital by paved roads. We are determined. We are determined to reduce the cost of electricity. She will not do it from the mansion alone. So she will be going out there looking for assistance and support. We hope to bring you all the good news when she returns to our capital. We ask for your continuous prayers for her on this journey of hope a search for assistance for our country. Legislators are going around the country engaging nationwide consultation on the draft petroleum law. We thank you members of the press for following it and for lending your support and coverage to the exercise. We invite all Liberians who can participate in that process to please do so. A few weeks ago, there was a groundbreaking ceremony in Kakata, Magibi County for the construction of a library. This groundbreaking by the Vice President was at the behest of the of a group of clergy men from and women from Minnesota, the USA. On the 30th of November, the President has agreed to attend and participate in a benefit dinner for the purpose of constructing a public library in Pinesville City, Liberia. And this project has been spearheaded by the First United Methodist Church family. We want to, it is on Saturday, Number 30. It's not often that we try to get into announcements like these. But as we keep talking about improving the educational sector, improving the quality of education to our people, we simply cannot do that in the absence of lab laboratories and libraries. As long as our children continue to come from school and go to play football, as good as it is, because sports help to keep you physically fit, 
But we also must attend in a special way to the minds. Sports will help our bodies. And many have argued that it also helps the mind. But we want to see our children come from school and go to a library, a computerized library. We want to see our children doing research there. Libraries with international access to, to libraries around the world. That when you're doing research now, you're not just going to uh, the, the nearby, what do you call it, the internet cafe and constrained by time. The only thing you know about research that will go to Wikipedia and copy everything from Wikipedia. And so this project is close to the heart of the president, close to the heart of this government, even though it's being spearheaded by the Methodist, the First United Methodist Church family. I want to invite Liberians everywhere, even though it will be in Beansville. But our children from everywhere will be able to go there. We need more libraries across our country. <clears throat> Any way you can support this project, support this program. Any way you can expose it, distinguished members of the press, please do so. So that Liberians can turn out, they can raise the money they need, they can put on decent. If you look at the, the drawing for the library that they want to put in Beansville, it will be second to none. But it will cost. I'm inviting you next Saturday to participate. Even if you don't get invited, you buy yourself. And I'm, and I'm adding my voice as chairman of the board of LBS to all Liberians to participate in the dialogue campaign on tomorrow at 11 o'clock at the offices of the Liberal Broadcasting System. It's hard to argue today that a national broadcaster it's not open to all. It's hard to argue that today. It is our collective duty. I want to encourage you, all of you listening to me, the Vice President will lead the effort. They will be dedicating 10, I think it's megawatt, kilowatt, kilowatt, 10 kilowatt television transmitters. We're looking at, for the first time, perhaps since, I think it's actually since the war, to have television signal reaching Basel, all of Basel, all of Cape Mount. They're testing. The plan is. They will test and see how far the signal is. They think they can reach as close to Banga as possible. Then their current two megawatt, two kilowatt transmitter, they intend to install in Banga and extend broadcast to Nimba and to Wolofa. Imagine some people have uh, the only thing they heard about TV that they were, they were reading in the book. Imagine what it does for people to be able to see what's going on around them and going on in the world. I know growing up, I used to try to get home time enough to catch the news. Most of our time, news used to be 8 o'clock. Then you want to listen in on the debates. You want to follow everything. But here's what is even more important. Imagine the influence today of television or the absence of it on many of our people, many places you go, you've been exposed to foreign concepts, 
So many people have never left the border of Liberia. But they're talking yellow foreigner now because all our video that is. What little television they're exposed to, they are building and developing foreign culture and foreign ideology. Imagine how far we can go to help de traumatize our population, to help make us one again, to continue to help. Imagine what it would mean to cover the nationwide Palava Hot program, which has been started. I want to thank the Independent National Human Rights Commission. I get calls every day. What is the government doing about TRC report? The president recently launched Palava Hot in Zuedu. Now the Independent Human Rights Commission has taken it a step further. On yesterday, they commenced a technical conversation around how it will work. They didn't say the meeting yesterday at City Hall at the Palava Hall there that they have now in City Hall. They are trying to figure out how to work with Palava Hall. Then the next thing is, you know we got travel groupings. Mende, Mel, Kwa. How do they entreat Palava Hall? What does Palava Hall mean to them? How do they conduct Palava Hall meetings? They're bringing all of that together, then they will develop the formula. Then they will train their Palava Hot leaders. So they're bringing people from 15 counties together. I'm encouraging you to cover that exercise. What this will do is to take us to another level in consolidating our peace and in reconciling our people. And I want you to notice what is exciting about this. To find peace, we are returning to our traditional value system and practice. The Palava Hut is something that is steeped in our tradition. Palava Hut is where we go to talk. Cases. The Palava Hut is where we go to agree. It's where we feel the sense of oneness. I want to thank the Independent Human Rights Commission. And those who believe that a TRC report is dead, I ask you to look again. We now have a reconciliation roadmap. We now have a Palava Hot discussion process launched. We have the Independent Human Rights Commission in firm control of it. And we look forward so when it actually begins across the country, it's time to go in there to find, to talk, to agree, to heal, to reconcile, and to walk as a nation again. It's time to put the past behind us. Not in a way that we forget, but in a way that we forgive. Not in a way that we get angry, but in a way that we get united. Not in a way that we forget who we are, but in a way that we agree where we are headed. I'm proud to be a librarian. May God bless our republic. Thank you. 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 Thank National and international issues. We like to take your questions if you have any. Uh, let me use one of the on the questions in superior to catch up with the news and to look like.
especially in the security sector. So I want to know whether your crackdown is going to go down a level in the event where you go to crack down on those people and you find some of those officials involved. What do you do in that instance? Thank you. Please come forward. Well, since the issue in the Italy territory, there has been some, say, in some quarters about the kind of drugs that were arrested from him. What kind of drugs was it that the street value is said to be in the tune of four million dollars? Okay, uh, what kind of drugs was it? Thank you. 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 Uh, Minister, actually, since the news broke concerning the arrest of Mr. Dulu, uh, the government has made several efforts in trying to clear the, the entire perception as to whether it was the head of a uh, motor care of President Eric Johnson said his own for But that's not an issue. Mr. Perry Dulu was arrested. Uh, I love to applaud the government for admittance that of a uh, so Dolo is actually a part of the Liberian National Police. Why, where do you stand as information minister that's been this perception from the public that of uh, high profile government officials, especially those in the police force, are you know smuggling drugs in the country and are, are using drugs? Do you agree now? It, 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 does it confirm the perception from the public that those government officials are drug users, especially when you admit that Mr. Dodo was caught with these actors. We close. Is this the only personal question? We close on here and we start close with the response. Please come forward. I'm Sandro from the Liberal Public Radio USA, Pennsylvania, and also the Watch Out Museum. Oh, we were here before, we were told the journalists that the judge journalist who uh, went and exposed people in connection with the punishment at the time concerning the passport, that the government would have indicted the men to bring him here. And now today, we are talking about uh, any company of being or indicted before him. What now, can we believe for what you have just said to me? <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a round of response to all these concerns. Thank you for your questions. Uh, sometimes I get the impression that other officials are either superhuman or I don't know human. But they are subhuman. Whatever human we are, we are equally composed of frailties, of weaknesses. That's why whenever one stands tall, standing up to the weaknesses and doing the right thing, we have just here encouraged you to also join us in celebrating. I know of no country in this world where an official of government has not been indicted for one form or another for commission of crime. In fact, it is the testament of the character of the government. Our commitment to the rule of law to keep all of us, all of us, 
irrespective of station and status. Servants of the Lord. To ensure that when we enter upon the public trust, we do our best to uphold that higher standard that is expected of us. One well, of incidents in great Western societies where governors, governors of states, have been arrested and indicted. Even on charges of drugs, I know of, of, of Western societies where prime ministers have been removed from offices for violation of the law. You don't castigate all governor officials because one governor official broke the law. What we must celebrate is that I don't care who you are, head of Congo. Day of Congo, middle of Congo. You break our laws, our laws will break you. That is what we celebrate today. That is the society we are becoming. I know it's still strange, and you know, some of us don't want to wake up to this reality. Does it mean because police superintendent Perry Dulu was arrested with drugs and die on police in drug scandal? No, that's a leap of faith. That is, in fact, that, that's too unfair a leap. We have no basis for such justification. What we know is that police superintendent Perry Dulu was arrested, his budget confiscated, those who conspiring with him arrested, exposed. And as we speak, they are being arraigned. What is it? Cape Man as well? Second? I think fourth or fifth judicial second. Is it the fourth? in Grand Cape Man County. And the reason they're not carrying him, for those of you who need to know, the reason they didn't carry him to temple of justice yet is because the venue of the crime, Cape Man, point number one. Point number two, the value of the crime is beyond the billowing of authority of the ministerial court. So they carry him to the second full level. They now intended to hide him. Who broke the news? The acting director of police. That, for me, if you don't find anything commendable in that, I do. I do. Now, does it therefore mean all officials of government corrupt or we we own drugs <laughs> or all of our transporting drugs now does it mean the entire police transporting drugs yeah if you have that information make it available <laughs> If you have that information, so when one journalist go back, it means the, the entire press corps useless. No, no. Oh, it means it only applies to you. That reasoning don't apply to you. <laughs> That's why I said to you. Sometimes we think that government officials are not human beings, or they are subhuman beings, or they are superhuman. Beings. No, they are just like you equally susceptible with human frailties and weakness. That is why I, I urge you to celebrate with us when someone does the right thing. 
even if they see their line of duty. Because even in the line of duty, people can do the wrong thing. That is why I'm asking you to thank the Joint Security, to thank that commissioner, to thank the police, to thank the DEA. Because I know, yeah, man, you didn't get a man in the room. Maybe your honor may do it. But some people I see here, they have caught four million dollars to have put up. One o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Allegedly coming from Sierra Leone. When you catch it to that border, one o'clock in the morning, and the play die. <laughs> Some of your pen will be with all ink. <laughs> Some of your microphone will have no battery. Your camera will not work. <laughs> so, so we want to thank, we want to thank every, everybody for having participated in this process. What kind of drugs? It is according to the drug enforcement agency thing. They are our experts. According to them, the lethal substances have been tested and found to be native marijuana from Sierra Leone commonly called compressed sensi. Compressed sensi. Packaged. Well, I can't describe it because I don't know where it's loaded. <laughs> Anybody in the room who can describe it for those who are in the <laughs> Oh, nobody can know what for Oh, okay, man. So, fortunately, all of us ignorant to why it looks like today. Oh, and I hope we remain ignorant to why it looks like. Don't go try to know it too much. Just know what the DEA say. The DEA say is native marijuana from Sierra Leone, commonly called compressed sensi. The substance was weighed and found to be 315 kilograms. The market estimated value is 330 million seven hundred fifty thousand Liberian dollars. Divide that by 80. And they said DEA lab laboratory technicians confirmed the identity of the substances by using a UN approved drug test kit donated to the DEA by the United States Embassy. I'm reading the DEA report. <laughs> so, so that is how they managed to know all of this. They were tested, not by our own equipment. Nobody too small in to test it. <laughs> they were tested by using a UN approved drug test kit donated by the G donated to the DEA by the United States Embassy. We want to thank everybody for that for that. We want to thank the US Embassy, we want to thank the United Nations for the continuous technical support and assistance to our various agencies. <laughs> I hope, because you're reporting for radio in Pennsylvania, you're not, you're not listening to me from Pennsylvania. <laughs> What we said in the Mark Cousin thing was that they were, he had attempted to ruin the hard, polished reputation of this government, of this country. We have fought so hard to bring us back within the respectability of the international community. And for his movie making effort, he sought to soil 
our reputation with very little evidence. And so we invited Mr. Kotsen to come here. We, we express all of the proper documentation necessary. In fact, he said, we never come here. And we reminded everybody that the giver of bride is as guilty as the receiver of bride. And even if that was not law in one country, law in our country, and we invited him to participate in our project, but he said, never come here. In the case of the former employee of this government, former managing director of the Liberia Airport Authority, it has been alleged that there was whether embezzlement or violation of the public trust in regard to funds in the care of the management of the Library Airport Authority. The government has proceeded to follow up those accusations with acquiring proper indictments in keeping with our law. It seems to us, Ms. Cochrane has actually indicated by constructive notice that she's aware of the indictment. But she has begun to answer to the counts of the indictment. The only thing we say is, you know, in law, uh, Anthony Jackson is our legal man on this team. What did I say? Improper venue. <laughs> the proper venue to answer to indictment that in our courts. So, uh, 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 to be answering our indictment in the newspaper is inappropriate venue. And we want to encourage you not to encourage us because sometimes the question you're going to be asking can provoke us to answer. But when we answer it, then we walk into a trap for people to say, ah, I will not get justice there. <laughs> so we ask you yourself to love this country as you have always done. And don't let somebody provoke you to provoke us. <laughs> that tell us a inappropriate venue. We want we want to play your team, but venue inappropriate. Jeff comes straight to our court and as I will be in the court to cover your story too. Every day you appear in court will be there. We will surround ourselves with you to make sure, to make sure everything goes well. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanna we wanna I think that's that that we answer all your questions. So, uh, we, will, we will now invite we will now invite the uh, Anthony uh, Jackson to Okay, uh, uh, we also invited our uh, Jimmy Mango. Oh, okay. so uh, let's 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 invite him just for a minute to see something. <laughs> I will ask all journalists to put her in the floor and in this hall to have a silent moment for the laws of our court.
Let's get a report out of town. Amen. Uh, Mr. Minister, I have no problem with the caption and see who are there. Charles Blair was eminent and great journalist killed by unknown men. But the same reason, on this day 28 years ago, I walked up when the then president, President Do, announced that it was a tussle of war, a pistol that went off. I got killed, I left my camera, and I walked on. I said it was wrong, it was not proof. So I will ask the ministry to move that motion on no men. We were arrested as subtle men and taken away. So uh, we are all sorry at this time. So the question will be raised. Why now? Why now? Uh, what, Mr. Minister, this call is in our honor. We are pleased to note that uh, we are the unsung hero. I want to come on hero calling. Imas Andrew, Jonathan Sam, Kwame Clement, and Jimmy Mango, and all the other technicians, all the people that were at the, the studio that day, but we were the ones that were on the field, and we went through that day. Now, we are happy that uh, you in particular, with all the ministers that came there, they were recognized now. But uh, it is true, your stewardship that you noticed. These people need to be remembered. That. So I want to say thank you. I want to say hats off to all the journalists. Keep on investigating and go deeper. I want to say thank you. After 28 years, we are not breaking the silence. And I say thank you. Stay alive. <laughs> thank you. Again, as the Ministry of Information, we celebrate investigative reporting. Which we better believe is the true the trademark of your profession. And so we from time to time remember those who offer themselves in sacrificial dedication to providing information to the Nigerian people by using the computers and the pens. Let me thank you. Thank you. Thank our colleagues. Most often you take time off to come regularly on a Thursday and sometimes special days to cover our major information press conferences. We applaud you for doing that. I'd like to give particular thanks to Mr. Brown today for reminding us all that uh, no matter your influence in society, whether huge or disproportionate, when you are caught in the commission of a crime, you will get prosecuted. You will be arranged. Uh, he uses a, an imagery. They will throw the book at you. And that's what the government is about. You know, he also reminded us that Liberia can never allow itself to be a safe human for drug trafficking. And so if you operate it, get to wherever you operate in it, be very strong about this. We come up with We raid this country of drugs. And so for those of our citizens who are in this composed uh, business practice, get away from it. This government will not spare any effort in making the future safe for our children by raiding this country of drugs. Thank you. On the issue of this conference, Mr. Brown, you know, we will not, we will try a newspaper. If Mr. Corbyn has something serious to say, I think she can voluntarily come. Or well, even giving us all the editing to go on the paper that we try to pass. Can we live in? Go to the good, very like a person. 
do the jobs a lot of things. Why do you want to move on the city of the newspaper? Go to the court. So these are simple issues. When people try to go to the public gallery and look for cheap jurors, then you know they don't have a routine. And these tattoos have been played over time. I, mean, I am aware of the tattoos. And so we will not play at their game. We encourage our citizens who serve as former uh, managing director for RRA to come. It is highly important to say, answer to this is that going to the core of all. Don't use the newspaper. They are inappropriate venues on this ground. Clearly articulated. And so we'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Bayer and my colleague Mr. Chuer, uh, Mr. Comrade uh, Jimmy Mango, and all of you, my professional colleagues, for taking time out to come regularly to the press conference. We look forward to having you next Thursday. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Taxi. We want to thank you for your patience. Thank you for being here. Let your newspaper pictures reflect what took place here today. Remembering what the minister said, including our father, Charles Thank you.